I'm centered and focused. <laughs> I am centered and focused. I am centered and focused. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's your favorite air nurse, Fedro. If you're brand new to this channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Our goal on this channel is to look for simple daily practices that we can use to enhance the quality of our lives. And remember, we're all work in progress and together we're all going to be working together to progress. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. You know, we have to go with our first quote of the day. So the quote of the day is by Zig Ziglar and it goes like this. People often say motivation does not last. Well, neither does baiting. That is why we recommend it daily. Again, people often say motivation does not last. Well, neither does baiting. That is why we recommend it every day. And this quote is by Zig Ziglar. So I'm a big fan of Zig. And I really, really love this quote because it kind of helps every time I say it every day. And it just goes to remind me that I have to make a deliberate effort towards my well-being every single day. So that way I can stay motivated, I can stay on top of things, and I can be the nurse pager you all need me to be. But remember, even though I'm your favorite nurse, I am not your personal nurse. So whatever we discuss, however it impacts you, please be sure to share with your personal provider. All right. All right. Our topic today is on burnout. And what is burnout? Burnout is a state of physical and emotional exhaustion that involves a sense of reduced accomplishment and, pers and loss of personal identity. And this is by the Mayo Clinic. So what is burnout? Um, burnout is real and COVID is real. And the healthcare community in, in particular has suffered from the impact of COVID, both directly and indirectly. So as a nurse, you go to work, you're dealing with patients that have COVID and you go home, you still don't get a break. Imagine if your um, family member or somebody you're caring for still has COVID. Even if that's not the case, you still have to go home and be who you are supposed to be. You're a breadwinner, a caregiver, whatever role you're involved in at home still must go on, right? So you're pretty much not getting any break in between because at work, you're working at home, you're still working. So where is the break? And there's been a whole lot of shortage of nurses and healthcare providers during this period. So first thing first, let's first go ahead and acknowledge all our healthcare providers, our doctors, our nurses, our therapists, everybody. Thank you for this work that you've been doing during this very difficult and demanding period. Needless to say, with, the, um, with my definition of burnout, a significant amount of this community, the healthcare community, is burnt out. And I believe I saw a survey that said that 60% of healthcare workers are saying they are burnt out. And I'm even surprised at 60%. I have a feeling it's way more than that. So this is where we come in. We have to be very supportive of all our healthcare providers. And remember, they're only human and we as a community um, also, uh, well, as a community, we have to be very supportive and kind towards them. And me as a nurse um, leader, I, it's, it, it's, um, it's very demanding and having people still commit and do the work to the best of their knowledge, it's just amazing how, how devoted some of these health professionals are. For instance, there was one particular nurse who cared for a family that lost over three members. Just imagine what life must have been for that family and for that nurse who has grown to know them. You know, it's never easy and such a thing could never be easy. It's just the reality of what COVID has brought in the situation. So please, that being said, COVID is real. 
continue to practice proper hand hygiene, wear your mask, and take care of yourself and your loved ones. All right, so that being said, I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to talk about COVID anymore at this point in time. So let's go ahead and talk about our burnout. So burnout, what are the major signs that you're being burnt out? So just as the, um, there are three major signs when it comes to burnout. There is one of uh, emotional exhaustion. And at this point, you're just dreading every single day. You don't want to get up, even if it's a normal day, even if it's something good, you're dreading it. You're like, okay, I, I don't want to do this. That's fine. So that's one of the number one signs. Number two, um, it is depersonalization. And this is when you're just angry and irritable. Everybody's getting on your nerves. Everybody's irritating you. You don't want to deal with everybody. You're very cynical and everybody's avoiding you. You, you don't want to be around people and people don't want to be around you. And you know, walking over 80 hours a week probably will do that to anybody. So, you know, those are some of the things that we need to be on the lookout for. Then the last part of it is the reduced personal efficacy. So let's say you're very, a very productive and you energized person, but suddenly your productivity has dropped down significantly. This is a time that you need to start checking yourself. Unfortunately, burnout kind of disguise itself sometimes as depression, but um, burnout is burnout. It's not a medical diagnosis, but it is real. And it can cause so many other side effects. It can affect your blood pressure. It makes you susceptible to diseases. You can actually end up with GI symptoms, like just playing that can take you to the air because you are burnt out and you did not address it. So we really need to address it and take this very seriously. Because if we don't, if we don't deal with this, guess what? It is going to deal with us. And you don't want to be that type of, you don't want to be reacting. You want to be proactive, okay? So you want to respond and not be reacting. So that being said, what are some of the things we can do um, to deal with burnout? I had to simplify this because this is what makes sense. First thing first, we have to evaluate our current situation. What are some of the things we can do differently? What is the situation? Is it the 80 hours week? Um, is it childcare? What is it? If you're working 80 hours week, it might be re time to, well, reduce those hours, take a, more days off. Those are some of the first, I mean, first things that what exactly is the problem? Because if you don't know what the problem is, you it's going to be very difficult to actually fix it. So that's the number one step in dealing with burnout. Number two, <laughs> you already know it. You have to set intentional goals. You know it. You have to set intentional goals. You thought you were going to escape the goals, right? Well, Goals, goals that are going to improve the quality of your well-being. You have to be deliberate in increasing at your restfulness, acti your restful activities. That includes your sleeping, your yoga, your calming down, whatever your deep breathing. You have to set goals to increase those good things. Simple. Um. Your well-being, is it going to be jogging? Is it going to be exercise? Is it going to be dancing? You know, your nose page is a good dance. I don't go there. But anyways, that's a, that's a side note. But what I'm saying is that you have to be very deliberate with your health, um, your physical well-being, your emotional well-being, your mental well-being, and your spiritual well-being. All these areas, you really, really need to be intentional. That is why you need to set those goals. Your goal would be, okay, well, I'm going to walk how many miles this week. So as far as your girl's weight loss, it's going on oh, and we're making progress. I'm not sharing the numbers yet, but the good news is that I actually started walking, stroke jogging, whatever you want to call it. But within an hour now, I'm able to cover three miles. So I am really, really proud of myself. <laughs> and again, we're all work in progress. So I intend to continue to do this and continue to progress. So that is the goal. We are making progress. That's the one we need to keep our eye on. 
so that be, so that's out of the way um then the third part get support so as wonderful as all this self wellness and you know self care is you need support we all need support and we need to find that positive support positive reinforcement if it's your friend if it's your family if it's your spouse if it's your whatever it is we need to deliberately find people and positive situations that is going to enhance our well-being we cannot take this for granted if you have a heart attack your heart attack is not going to think what is going on remember heart attack it really can happen your high blood pressure you are easily more susceptible when you do not deal with this burnout and imagine if you're saying i have to do this i have to do that if this disease or condition were to catch you on a way then you have nothing to do so please eh um please be very deliberate about taking care of yourself okay and remember according to zig ziglar motivation usually does not last they say it doesn't last but neither does baiting that is why we recommend it daily. So whatever it is that is going to take to motivate yourself, please do it. Just find something that is very practical and let's prevent this burnout. Probability is that we're never, we're never going to get rid of it. But if we're mindful and if we're intentional, we're probably going to catch it much, much sooner and be able to address it before it gets out of hand. All right. So remember, we're all work in progress, working to progress together. Until next time, stay smiling. It's your favorite nurse, Nurse Fiji.